What's up guys, welcome back to the Big Logan channel. Today, we're buying a van. How much is this one? For you, it's the end of the month, special deal, 100,000. <laughs> Sold. Sold. Deal. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's get going. Introducing Pegasus. We're gonna call her Peggy for short. So Peggy the Pro Master is a Ram Pro Master 2500, 159 inch wheelbase, high roof in the uh, bright metallic silver. So Big Logan Channel is gonna be doing a full DIY van conversion on this into an adventure van. So my wife and I are super pumped about converting this. Um, we're gonna vlog everything all along the way. And on today's episode, I'm already starting on part of the build. So let's get started guys let's get it going all right all right so here is peggy she's a 159 ram pro master 2500 she is in the bright metallic gray we got her brand new with the ram rebate leftover 19 models so we just picked it up last week um, options that came with it were the partition and just to get you guys up to speed i already pulled the uh, partition out here so with that i'm gonna have to add some trim right around here or order the OEM trim piece pretty sure I'm gonna be adding so much wood to all this that a little piece of trim there is not gonna be much you know of a game changer so I'll probably just trim it out instead of buy the OEM stuff but uh, yeah there she is she's bright silver it's gonna be like a laboratory environment in here um, being that it's brand new so we we were shopping for a used one uh, to be hundred percent honest with you and they dropped these things like seven eight grand off the sticker since it's a leftover and uh making room for their 2020s i guess so that's the van i'm sure if you guys have been into van life lately you've seen a lot of these already i'm going to show you the design for our specific layout let's get into it all right guys so i'm using trimble sketchup uh free 3d software for uh interior design architectural um, mechanical type conceptual design um, so I've used this in the past on the channel. It's worked out great. Um, and uh, we're doing the same thing for Peggy here on this van build. So um, I'm taking some notes from a lot of other van builders on the community on YouTube, uh, Tiny Home Living, and uh, been watching a lot of stuff and doing my research. Um, so this is definitely a result of doing a lot of YouTube research of other uh, van builders and uh, van lifers. So. Um, this is the 159 uh, cargo area, and uh, this will be converted into a kitchenette and seating area, as well as a pull-out bed. So the bed here um, in the back will collapse down to about 44 inches. I'm six foot five, so I'm actually going to pull this out into a uh, king bed. So this is going to be a sliding uh, slat bed. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do on the build after putting the flooring down is design most of the van around this because you can see it takes up a lot of space. Um, so it will pull out into a king, uh, slightly more narrow than a king. I think it's going to be about 73 inches versus like 76. Um, but other than that, that's the bed design. It's going to have a garage space underneath. So we're going to do a raised bed system. Um, all electrical battery bank and uh, solar input and uh, inverter will be on the left side of the wheel well on the right side wheel well we will do all water so water is going to run down the right side of the van and reside there um, so underneath that bed when it's collapsed back we're going to have exposed a um, convertible shower so again taking notes from the van lifers making use of the space we're going to have a shower pan in here uh, water mixer and a hideaway um, shower head up here under a cabinet. This cabinet will fold open and we'll hang our shower curtain from it. So indoor shower in here, um, opening the back doors. We'll have a mixer back here on the right real, <laughs> excuse me. We'll have a mixer as well for an outdoor shower on the right wheel well here. So um, yes, all water on the right side and then moving over here to the kitchenette area kitchen sink um, and we'll have a gas burner built in here as well so 
Um, this will be countertop. It will be removable. And I'm hoping to reuse this uh, countertop piece. And I'll show you that in just a second here. So um, just two facing um, kitchenette style seating, um, but this should have a dual purpose storage cubbies that pull out and then also just kind of model this here um, this is going to turn into a bed as well so that piece that i just pulled out obviously it's not all going to extend from under the chair but hopefully the countertop piece can drop here the tabletop can drop as well and make um, some form of maybe a shorter version of a twin bed we'll see what it comes out to dimensionally i don't have all that dialed in right now um, but we're hoping to make a convertible uh, kid or guest bed um, in the floor here as well. So when you walk straight into the van, um, we're going to be doing a uh, DC fridge. And I'm thinking about a junk drawer and a little area underneath the fridge to allow the uh, fridge to vent, but also maybe dry out shoes. So have a little uh, shoe cubby uh, underneath the fridge. Junk drawer above it and then a catch-all countertop like first entrance into the van type thing everything can just kind of go here um not sure if we're going to be able to work a tv into this space here um it would be cool to see if we could do a tv on an arm uh, swivel mount here um i definitely want to do all the control panel right behind the uh small countertop here so inverter controller uh some of the dc switches uh shut off switches battery monitor all that should reside right here, um, right when you walk in the van and close up to the captain's chairs uh, if you're driving down the road and keep an eye on stuff. We are going to do some overhead cabinets. My wife and I aren't going to be living in this full time, so we're definitely letting like the bed and some of the other pieces here drive the design. Um, we're going to fit storage in wherever we can. Um, there's definitely going to be storage under these chairs and we'll see what we can do overhead. Again, I'm really tall, so I don't want to block out the space too much, but we definitely want some overhead storage. Um, we do have plans to put a very small uh, microwave up here as well, and we'll see about back over the bed, um, maybe some, uh, some further storage left and right, we'll see. I just kind of modeled this in here. I doubt this is gonna be the size of the cabinet, um, but we'll see. It should be pretty close. This is conceptually close enough to getting us where we want to uh, get started. Yeah, so this is uh, the basic 3D design. We're gonna revisit this throughout the build um, just to recap different systems and parts, um, but this is super exciting, guys. It's, it's coming to life now. We've got the van, so uh, things are happening fast and uh, we're ready for it. Uh, let's get back into our first part of this project, which is putting down the subfloor where everything else is going to uh, build off of. All right, guys, next day, same shirts, 4th of July weekend, America. Hey, we're gonna start the van project off by taking out this floor mat, tracing out these D-ring holes. I'm gonna use this hardware here to secure the subfloor. I'm gonna route her down to counter bore for that hardware so it lays flush underneath the plane of this uh, board top. And that's gonna be it. Grab the mat out, trace out at one time all three boards. Should go pretty smooth, let's go. Profile's cut here for all three pieces. So this is like almost dead nuts 12 feet, the, the floor mat. Got some decent drop out of it too. Hopefully can repurpose that, save some money. Next step is to fasten this board down in the bed. One thing that we're gonna use to bond it is this Liquid Nails brand. It's called Fuse It, all surface. Construction adhesive for glass, metal, wood, ceramic, granite, mirrors, rubbers, etc. This is about three times the price um, of a regular just liquid nails uh, construction adhesive. So hopefully that will help me bond from the enamel of the bed right to the bottom of the wood, make a nice soft cushion. 
I am not doing insulation underneath this. I believe that this air gap will be a great insulator. You can see how this is ribbed and raised. That's to make this rigid, the belly of this rigid for handling cargo. This air gap is gonna be there with the subfloor over it. Hopefully that air gap will be a nice insulator. We're gonna have an air conditioner in here in the summer. We're gonna run heat in the winter. If the floor gets cold for some reason, we might throw a rug down in the tra high traffic area. Um, so next step is to uh, accommodate and repurpose these D-ring um, bolts. They got eight of those on the floor all around. Take one of these bad boys out. And hopefully reuse this. So, da, 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 da. so, all right, so right here, I want to counterboard down here with the router. We'll see how this goes. I haven't used a router in a long time. I used a router when I was a kid in my dad's workshop. My buddy bought this for me for helping him build a, a bar in his barn. Shout out, John Boy. Appreciate you, brother. But yeah, we're going to router these babies out. Let's get it going. First router op is done. Here's what we got. Nice little deep pocket there. I know it's not perfect, but I really only need about an inch down here for clearance in the bolt head. Let me show you that again real quick. You can see there, we're looking really good. So, time to do eight more. Nice. All right, check it, check it. So here's a whole board, counter board with the router and then pre-drilled. Man, it's rocking and rolling. It's, uh, it's coming together. We got this one laid in here, sized up. I am pumped to do this. It is it's such an awesome DIY. I'm already having a lot of fun. Can't wait to bring you more. Let's get this floor in. Floor's down, sized out. Looking nice, looking nice. I'm uh, over here taking the D-rings and repurposing um, this into a washer. I can't just fold it down because the counter bore is not deep. I don't want to take that much plywood away on the subfloor. So when it's folded over like this, it's too thick. But when I cut these off, I can lay the ring flat. So I'm uh, grinding all these D-rings off. I have plenty extra of these from around uh, higher up on the van. So I may still determine if I wanna use these points or just bury them under the floor like this. So the bolt will go in. I had to route out these holes just a little bit bigger to get the line right. I don't want any pressure on this board as it might heat up and try to expand and warp. So I wanna keep them as loose as possible with a nice big washer, just hold them down flat so they can uh, expand and contract a little bit as they're getting broken in so cutting these out this is all lined up and next is just to glue it down so getting to it all right All right guys, check it out. We got it all down. Glue is setting up. Hopefully it works out. So here we go. There it goes. That is super tight. Rock solid. Let's get another one here. Well, that's a wrap. Got the floor in. Gonna let that glue set up. Got the hardware in, so everything's holding down really good. I don't feel any flex or bowing going on right now. That is ideal. Hey guys, really appreciate it. We're gonna build the uh, sliding bed back here over the garage area in uh, episode two of the Peggy Van Transformation. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Big Logo channel. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.